Hello friends, this video on getting to know plants part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 4. If a plant has fibrous root, what type of venation do its leaves likely to have? So we have already learned that there is a relationship that exists between the root type and the type of venation on the leaves. So what we have learned is PF. That is, if a plant has parallel venation, it will have fibrous root. So, in this question, it, the plant has fibrous root. So, definitely the venation would be parallel venation, right? So, the answer would be parallel venation. Now, these type of venation are generally seen in grasses or grass-like plants, for example, wheat, maize. So, there when you look at their leaves, you will see that they have parallel venation. So, just by looking at their leaves, you can predict that they have fibrous root. So fibrous root means yeah, there is no so in fibrous root structure what happens is there are moderately growing branches there is no, there is no concept of having one main root and then lateral roots coming out from it. So that concept is not there. So that, that's about uh, fibrous root. If a plant has leaves with reticulate venation what kind of roots will it have? So as we discussed, we have also learned that reticulate venation will always have tap roots. So now in this case, since the leaves have reticulate venation, so obviously the root would be a tap root system. So in tap root system, we have one main root and from that main root, we have branches coming out. So that's the tap root system. So plants like rose, carrots, they have a taproot system with reticulate venation on their leaves. Question number six. Is it possible for you to recognize the leaves without seeing them? How? Now, whenever we have to recognize leaves, so there is a relationship between leaves and roots. So if we are said that we are not allowed to see the leaves, we can look at the roots and then we can uh, establish a relationship between the two. So if the venation is parallel, the root would be fibrous. So look at the roots. If they are fibrous, that means they have a parallel venation. If the, if the roots are tap, in that case they have reticulate venation. So like for plants like grasses or wheat, maize, they have parallel venation and fibrous roots whereas plants like rose and carrot, they have reticulate venation with tap roots. Question number seven, write the names of the parts of a flower. So when you look at a flower, the important parts are stalk. So this is the stalk. So it holds the flower. Next is thalamus which is the swollen portion of the stalk. So the upper portion of the stalk is swollen. So that's thalamus. Next is petals, the colored structures of the flowers. These are the structures which attract insects. Sepals, so the green structures which are present on the outer side of the petals and they provide protect protection to the bud. Stamens. The stamens are the male reproductive organs of the flower. So these are stamens. So they produce the male gametes called pollen grains. And finally the female reproductive organ, this one which is present at the center, that is, that is called carpel or pistil. So they produce the female gametes which is ovum or egg. So these pollen grains and ovum they fuse together and that's how sexual reproduction take place in a plant. Question number nine. Name the part of the plant which produces its food. Name the process. So plant, food is prepared by photosynthesis that is synthesizing food in presence of light. To prepare food by photosynthesis chlorophyll is needed. So chlorophyll is a green colored pigment which is present in the leaves of the plant. Therefore leaves perform the process of photosynthesis. And this entire process takes place only in presence of sunlight. So in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight what happens is carbon dioxide and water mix together to form food in the form of glucose and oxygen is also released during the process. So that, that's what happens during the process of photosynthesis. Question number 10. In which part of a flower you are likely to find the ovary? So ovary is present in the female reproductive part, so this is the ovary. 
So ovary is present within the carpel or pistil of a flower. Question number 10. Name two flowers each with joined and separated sepals. Now as I said that different plants, different flowers have different arrangements of petals and sepals. So if you look at a hibiscus, you would see that the sepals are joined. So look at the sepals. So these are the sepals, right? The green colored leaf like structures. So they are joined. Similarly, you look at a rose plant. So here also you would be able to see the sepals, which is not visible in this picture, but just try it out. So in a rose plant, you would see three sepals. Similarly, if you look at a flower like Datura, so this is a Datura flower. So this Datura also you see the sepals they are So the sepals in Datura are also joined. Again if you compare it to Jasmine, so in Jasmine again the sepals are free. So in that way different flowers will have different types of arrangements for petals as well as sepals. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on plants. So I hope you would have got a lot of uh, new facts about plants. So what I would suggest is go out to your garden or go out to a nearby park uh, or a botanical garden if possible. Try to look for more trees, look at the venation, different types of venation, different leaves. Look out to different flowers, see how the petals are arranged, how many petals they have, how many sepals they have and these kind of activities will actually help you increase your knowledge and also give you a clearer idea about plants. So with this, uh, I, I think we will conclude this lesson. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.